Hey everybody, welcome to another swimming pool science video. I'm your host, Josh Mall the Voice, and I'm excited to have you here for this one. There is a lot of information here, and this is, I'm not gonna lie, a long video. Before we get started, I wanna encourage you to hit the subscribe button because I know about 93% of you guys watching aren't subscribers, and we'd love to have you on board so that you get all the latest alerts on all our new videos and all our important information so that you can keep your pool in tip-top shape. A good friend of mine, Kyle Morgan, who is one of the go-to gurus for us pool professionals here in the southwest of the United States, put on a great seminar about algicides, what types there are, how to use them, and more importantly, how to save you guys time and money. So I took the time to videotape the entire thing, boil it down to its most important parts, and then put it out for you guys here. So from here on out, I'm gonna let Kyle do the talking. I'm Kyle Morgan. Um, I have a company, Splash Pool Service, and I also do specialty work for easy care products. This class is called an algicide class, but we have to kind of realize why, why use algicides. I actually want you guys to be able to look at this and realize that there's only three types of algicides here, okay? And you'll know ex instantly what type it is and when it should be used. That's the goal for today, okay? So very tactical. I, long time ago, I stopped looking at what the brand is called, okay? It doesn't matter what we call it, black algae killer, yellow algae killer. There's yellow algae killer that's ammonia-based, and there's yellow algae killer that's copper-based. These are going to be categorized into one of three, or you guys might see some little, little, little bit of a hybrid, okay? But you can now pick based off of the algae side rather than the brand. Think of this as a, if this is the whiteboard, we're not talking about balance. What's the difference between balance? Have it, anyone ever said, my pool's balanced, why do I have, why am I having a problem? Okay, balance is different than sanitized. Today also we're gonna talk a lot about a chlorine, okay? And there's nothing out there to, that beats it. We both oxidize and disinfect with chlorine. Well, how available is the chlorine? How available would that be and how effective? Okay, so I always think about available and effective when it comes to chlorine. So these three things, the orange breakpoint, CYA, and then supplemental when impractical is when we go to algicides. There is times when we have algae that we have a chlorine reading. And then there's other times we have algae and there's no chlorine reading. What I'm finding the most when I'm helping people, they don't understand the importance of chlorine breakpoint. Getting a chlorine reading when we come back, okay? So before I have people say, which algicide should I use? And they just kept trying algicides. So chlorine demand. So the number, the number one thing that I always want to talk, to, talk about is breakpoint. Until we actually kill everything that needs to be killed and we have a reading up above zero that lasts till we come, then we, we haven't solved a major problem. You can almost ignore every, don't use any of these until you do that. Breakpoint is so important. There are some algicides we're gonna get pretty quick that actually consume chlorine, right? If we put the algicide in the pool, it's gonna wait for chlorine to dissipate. It doesn't really go away until you have that chlorine synergy. We can solve most pools, most problems with chlorine, but it becomes impractical, doesn't it? Not gonna be practical. So we're gonna use algicide. If you just wanna follow the little, the little whiteboard thing down, we're gonna supplement when it's impractical. So what do we supplement with? What we're not talking about today is enzymes can help, oxidizers, phosphate removers, we're not talking about those today. We're talking about supplementing with algicide because we're having issues, okay? So algicide and chlorine is gonna be the main topic today. So um, grab the spectrum. By law, every time there's an algicide, they have to put the ingredients, okay? So if you ever wanna know if it's an algicide, because sometimes there's chemicals that say, we make your water pretty, make it sparkle, right? And if you don't, can't tell what it is, it's not an algicide. If you look over here to the left, on this side, these are all the, the algicides that use chlorine. I sometimes imagine, like, almost like a magnifying glass, the same sun is coming, but it's gathering that light and making it super strong. So it's kind of like super shocking, okay? When you add an ammonia product, if you see in the middle of the stripe, we know that ammonia products, bromine products, and in this case, 
a polyquat, which I like to call quat because it confuses people with polymer, a quat chemical, those will take chlorine and hit it really hard. Um, and we just want to know like, when we would add that kind of algae, algicide. Okay? And technically, some of these aren't even algicides, but they're chlorine boosters. We're going to call them algicides. Knowing that these two are on that left side, would this be a one I wanted to use in a pool that can't hold chlorine? Right? Do you see how that would make your problem worse? When you look at this break point thing, I mean, I know there's times where you have zero chlorine in the pool. You throw yellow out or yellow treat or something in it. Now this demand is like here, and we're adding minuscule amounts of chlorine. I'm talking weeks. Now, every time they add chlorine, it'll quickly use it up, bam, kind of shock the pool. Josh, you could, sometimes on, on a situation like that, we can get it blue, green. Blue, right? Yeah. We have no chlorine reading. Over here to the left, if you could know that we, can, we could take away probably one third of these and put them all into one category, we now know buy whatever's cheaper. It's not even a brand problem. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, do we ever want to put chlorine and ammonia together out of the water? All right? That's bad. That's like some of the worst, right? Um, in the water, it's doing the same thing. It's having a reaction. That oxidizing can really burn your eyes. So just realize that when you use that kind of chemical. This is a, what I'd call a quat algicide. It's the cheapest material to make algicide. So when you go to Home Depot, what is it? Anywhere that you go to like a, um, a big box store and there's an algicide, it's this at different levels. Because you're going to learn that percentages matter, okay? So this is pretty strong, where some of the stores will sell a gallon and it'll be 7%. And this one is like 49, okay? If they're not buying from a pool store, they're over here on the left side. Okay. Most treatments on this yellow, any of the powder yellows are what? A capful. In the early days, I've dumped in half of this. And then looked on the ingredients and added just chlorine for a capful. Do you see what I did? The ratio? See, you're adding ammonia products and bromine products and you have to add equal chlorine to kill it all off. Okay, that's how that process works. You have to add that right amount. So I'm gonna tell you, on this algae side, be precise. Let's jump to the opposite side, over to metals, okay? Yeah, so it, it actually kills bacteria like chlorine does, okay, on its own. Doesn't take, like the, uh, the last example, it takes chlorine with it to work, right? This will kill stuff on its own. So metals last a long time and they kill on their own. Okay, they kill on their own. So it doesn't take away any chlorine. So now if I'm trying to stay away from seven days and I didn't have a chlorine problem, I'm not creating a chlorine problem by adding metals. If you ever, if you treat with these guys, they'll say, don't add this guy. <laughs> so some, when you do metal, and I don't know if it says anything about that, but you shouldn't combine other metals. There's very few metals that let, allow you to dose. And this is one that, that just, from the, just from the ingredients, this is a metal, but it's so low on percentage that it's not adding the same as if I added another metal. Does that make sense? So it's just less percent. So you have to not only know what's in it, but what's the percentage, okay? So let's go through these little characteristics. Kills independently. <laughs> So it can disinfect and actually kill algae without any chlorine. But we always want you to add chlorine to all, with all of these, but I'm just saying you can. Um, it acts fast. The, the negative, I guess, could be staining or falling out. It fluctuates in cost. The, you really have to be careful with the EPA on these. Like, um, there's a lot of laws about how the copper, because it could be toxic, and, and uh, at, at certain levels it definitely is. And then the repetitive treatment warning, okay? So just, if you use metal, you wanna to shift to something. I usually, like these guys will say do it twice a year, right? Maybe once a year if in the spring, but you don't wanna treat with metal if you've already treated with metal. Don't keep treating with that, okay? Oh, fallout is um, when no, the metal, well fallout can happen with other things. The one with metal, it actually can't stay in the water anymore. And it starts to powder. So people that have super 
purple line, sometimes, and really the act of raising your pH, like when you throw in soda ash, you can come back the next day and they have powder on the bottom. So you pulled the metal out of suspension, okay? So that can be kind of hard to explain to a customer. Let's go to the middle one. And this is the one that my company sells, so that's why I kind of started, started this whole thing. So a polymer, it kills also independently. It's, it's a water clarifier. There, when you overdose, there is no issue. You can add this one no matter what you, else you've added. Adding more doesn't cause the staining or doesn't cause the chlorine demand, okay? Except you'd just be wasting money as dumping more than you need. Um, chlorine synergy is the same kind of thing. It can kill on its own, but the clarifying and other things happen when you're adding chlorine with it. And then um, reoccurring treatment synergy for prevention. So now that we described the characteristics of these three, we could talk a little bit about what's the conditions we might use them, okay? So a lot of times I get this question, what's the best algaecide? Yeah. yeah. And also, it depends what the circumstances are, but they all work. These categories are not, no one's inventing new categories. Okay. Let's think of some different recipes, okay? So let's say you have a chlorine, you have a chlorine pool that's, that's been maintaining and it started to get a little fuzzy. Next week, it's a little green. Third week, completely green, and the chlorine has stayed at a five, okay? So think, let's think about that for a second. What's some, of the, what's some of the things we could do? Yellow algae in a pool with a bad filter is a big green pool. Yellow algae with a great filter is a little yellow on the walls, isn't it? Same algae, okay? So realize that's the, because remember we changed the word from yellow algae to chlorine resistant algae. Both of those scenarios are probably the same algae, but in multiply it, it looks yellow when it's nice and innocent on the wall. But you brush it, where, what does it do next week? It can come back in the same place, okay? One of my favorite ways to deal with this one is because I am coming, try to come every seven days, okay? I, I would do a little recipe over here to the right. I would probably do a metal, okay? But I do look at my history. Has this pool had metal every month? Maybe not metal, but I'm going to probably do a metal with a polymer. These two are okay to do together, I, and I'm not talking about that together. <laughs> so I'm talking, yeah, so what I typically do is I'm going to add metal through the skimmer. I, I like to do that and watch it. Um, you do need to make sure everything's in balance, you know. Um, I add the metal through the skimmer, and then I might add the algaecide, the polymer algaecide around the side. So basically, this one actually got a picture and said, your pool's green but has chlorine, so we need to do a special treatment. I went out and did the cheapest metal like that I use all the time, and I added a polymer, and it was Tuesday that I went this week, Friday, crystal, not crystal clear, clear, sea blue to the bottom, okay? And all I did is add those, those chemicals. I did, now as a catalyst, I always want to add chlorine as a catalyst, and now the chlorine's higher because this one has two problems. Sand filter on a lake. I have, a, I have video of this pool with the new baby ducks in it every year. Okay, so really close, so it's all kinds of stuff. It has phosphates, it has other stuff too, but I can take care of it with algaecide. What's another algae scenario? Black algae? So black algae, most of the time, now some people might, might deny this, it's almost always a lack of chlorine where the algae is. It's mostly um, a biomass of like, um, what's another word, um, mold. You want to destroy the membrane, destroy it, poison it. I like to poison it with something. And truthfully, I would use polymer or metal, either one, um, and then you continue to brush it all away. Wire brush it all away. The whole, I know it sounds good about the black algae has roots and stuff like that. It's not really true, but it makes, it, it, it explains the phenomenon that it keeps coming back. It's not as much roots, it can be a crack and there could be some living algae that you never ripped the membrane open down lower and it kind of protects itself. 
That's why some of that blue-green algae is alive in this mold or whatever, this biomass. So let's say you are having a chlorine demand problem. Which one, which one might you use and why? And which one do you don't use? So chlorine demand is my issue and it's green. So it is green and I can't, because there's times we have a chlorine demand problem but the pool's clear, right? Zero, clear, zero, zero, zero. So let's say it's a green pool with a chlorine demand problem. What algicide could we use to help us? Which one? Okay. Yeah, either one of those are gonna, because what they're gonna do is actually take away the fight that chlorine has been doing 100%. Chlorine was doing everything. It's trying to kill the ammonia and kill the algae. Do you see the difference? There's ammonia in that water. Then we have algae in that water, and then, then we're, we're killing bacteria with polymer or metal, okay? You know, most of the time, I am going to marry the two when chlorine is really high, I'm still not having an effect. I take over, I don't know how I get them, but I get pools that like, it's a third guy, can't clear our pool up. Yeah, it's a metal, polymer, and because it's a sand filter almost all the time, <laughs> run in that pool 24 hours a day, and it might take a week. It's, I make them take a picture above the steps into the shallow end every morning from the same place. And if I can teach them a quick chlorine sample, I want to make sure chlorine's high, filter's running. And every day I can see the difference. If you're making progress, it's working. Now I've used strategically the yellow in commercial pools. Why would I, if I had some algae in a commercial pool, why might I use one of these? See, they have a very restriction on chlorine. I can kind of play with this because I'm actually putting in chlorine that's gonna get consumed, okay? So this is good if we don't want the chlorine to be jacked. I mean, knowing, to look at the bottles now, do you really have to, um, you wouldn't need my help, right? Ammonium, bromine on this side, and then the quat will always have ammonium written in it. Oh, what's the trick on polymers? You notice that one? There's only one that I, there actually is two. It, it has the word poly at the very first word, okay? So you can always tell those, and there's no ammonium. I'm not saying they could, there's someone could mix the two. They could mix a, a skillet and a polymer, they could. So just be careful, keep reading the whole line. You're looking for ammonium. No ammonium? Okay, we're gonna be, one of the, we're gonna be a polymer, okay? The, the biggest category is this ammonium, bromine, and, and quat. That's a tons of different categories for that. Well, I hope you found Kyle's information informative. Before we wrap up, let's just recap. There are three types of algicides out there. You've got ammonia, bromide, and quat type algicides with some pros and cons. They use chlorine. They need chlorine in the water to work. They consume it. So they combine with chlorine to work, which means your chlorine level is going to read low. And these may not be the best for a pool that has trouble maintaining a chlorine level. You've got polymer style ones. They kill independently. They work next to chlorine like an ally. They clarify the water and work well with chlorine and uh, they require a little bit of reoccurring treatment for uh, proper dosage. We also have our metal-based algicides, which kill completely independent of chlorine. Uh, they're fast acting and uh, well, their prices fluctuate with the market and uh, you know you gotta watch those environmental costs as well. So the important thing is, is you've gotta know your water chemistry, you've gotta know your history, you gotta keep an eye on that pool while you're working through your algae issues in order to fight them. Figure out what works best for you and then stick with that plan. Because remember, I may know swimming pools, but you know your pool the best. Guys, before we go, don't forget, hit the subscribe button so you can join us and be alerted anytime we have a new video coming out. And we want your comments. Put your comments in down below. When we hit 11,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do a sit down with Kyle where we're gonna answer 10 of the most prominent questions in the comments section from this video. So stay tuned for that and hit that subscribe button. All right guys, I gotta go. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.